Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Hello out there and good morning. You're welcome to Daily Fountain, the daily devotional guide of Church of Nigeria on ASN and television, reaching you from Abuja. Let us pray. Our Father and our Lord, we have come this morning to study at your feet. We pray, O Lord, the King of glory, give us grace to understand. Open our eyes for us to behold the wondrous things out of thy law, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is Saturday, November 6th, 2021, and our Bible reading is Ecclesiastes chapter 7. It will be taken from verse 15 through 29. Ecclesiastes 7, 15 through 29. I have seen everything in my days of vanity. There is a just man who perishes in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man who prolongs life in his wickedness. Do not be overly righteous, nor be overly wise. Why should you destroy yourself? Do not be overly wicked, nor be foolish. Why should you die before your time? It is good that you grasp this, and also not remove your hand from the order, for he who fears God will escape them all. Wisdom strengthens the wise, more than ten rulers of the city. For there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. Also, do not take to heart everything people say, lest you hear your servant cursing you. For many times also your own heart has known that even you have cursed others. All this I have proved by wisdom. I said, I will be wise. But it was far from me. As for that which is far off and exceedingly deep, who can find it out? I applied my heart to know, to search and seek out wisdom and the reason of things, to know the wickedness of fool, even of foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets, whose hands are fetters. He who pleases God shall escape from her, but a sinner shall be trapped by her. Here is what I have found, says the preacher, adding one thing to the other to find out the reason, which my soul still seeks, but I cannot find. One man among a thousand I have found, but a woman among all these I have not found. Truly, this only I have found, that God made man upright, but they have sought out many schemes. The word of the Lord. It was Napoleon de Bonaparte that once said that true wisdom is indeed a resolute determination. It is on this trajectory that I can remember through the vicissitude of time, one of my friends that once defined wisdom as the ability of acquiring little knowledge of everything. Maybe, just maybe, that was why the word of God in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. In all your getting, get understanding. It is based on these premises we shall this morning be looking at the topic that says, 
determined to be wise. Determined to be wise. From the place we've just read from our Bible reading, we can see Solomon trying to stress on the essence and relevance of wisdom. Solomon was underlining the fact that despite he has seen it all, despite him acquiring all in life, despite him seeing everything that life can give, yet nothing can be compared with wisdom. Wisdom is profitable. My dear weavers, wisdom is gainful. Wisdom is lucrative. Wisdom is the ability to put our times and knowledge into proper use. A man that has wisdom has power. A man that has wisdom possesses some element of strength. A man that has wisdom indeed is a man of creativity and innovation. A man that has wisdom is an embodiment of grace. My beautiful and wonderful viewers this morning, the essence and importance of wisdom cannot be overemphasized. And that is why I want us to look at this topic and properly dissect it using two perspectives. Number one is what I call horizontal wisdom. These are calls on the issue of how far you're able to handle your affairs. How do you treat people around you? How do you manage your excesses? Maybe in time of your anger. How do you relate with people? What do you use your God-given gift or resources to do? When you are using that resources God has given to you to show love to your neighbor, to your friends, indeed, that is wisdom. Even when you use it to show love to your so-called enemy, that also is wisdom. Because when you like only your friends and hate your enemies, there is no difference between you and the unbeliever. And therefore, wisdom demands that you love all with all you've got. When you try to suppress or oppress the less privileged, using your position of authority to inflict fear and pain on people, that is not wisdom. That is foolishness of my own mind. We must begin to think of having wisdom in all that we do. Some of us take everything we hear to heart. Verse 21 we read says that you do not have to take anything that you hear to heart. For anybody that does that is not wisdom, rather foolishness. When somebody tells you something, or when you hear something, how do you re react with those things? It is important this morning to now advise ourselves in the context of what we are studying that we must have to relate with people and not take everything we hear at heart. You are a man with authority. People bring complaints to you. They bring all sorts of things to you. How do you re react to them? Wisdom demands that you have to sit down. Isolate those things you've heard. Properly dissect them. Try to extract them. And know the best way to act. You don't need to act immediately. There is a possibility that what Mr. A is telling you against Mr. B is out of his or own ingenuity. Maybe to spite Mr. B or to tell people around him that he's closer to authority. And you, the man at the helm of affairs, should be able to sit down and think of those things that you've heard, whether it's the real thing to think about or whether it's gossip. Wisdom demands that you have to sit down and know about those things. 
Study Solomon, the wisest man on earth. Two women were brought before him. Two of them claiming ownership of a child. And he said, let me have a matchet so that I'm going to divide this child. Give one to the other and another one to the other woman. And here is that woman that killed the child as a result of where she was sleeping. And said, yes, oh yeah, king, you have done well. But the real owner of the child said, no, king, please. Rather than dividing or killing this child, please give that child to her. When the child grows, you'll be able to know the one that is the mother. So the Bible says that Solomon perceived that the last speaker of a woman happens to be the real owner of the child. Solomon was able to dispense this justice that is both pleasing to divinity and humanity because of the wisdom that he possessed. And therefore, we must begin to think aloud. Let us not be hasty or rash in taking our decisions, for such is not the action of a wise man. Oftentimes, we engage in this issue of being all ourselves. We don't try to welcome the opinions of people. We don't try to hear them out. This mentality of jack of all trade, and master of none, must stop if indeed we are determined to be wise. That is what has kept our nation this way. Because our leaders don't want to hear from people. They think that they know it all. And at the end of the day, they will make rash decision that will be to the detriment of the nation. We must endeavor to imbibe this character and behavior of inclusivity. No man is an island. At the same time, no man knows it all. We must begin to hear people out. Bring them together. Let us discuss about this. Remember, even in creation, Godhead was able to summon. He said, come, let us. Inclusivity. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, come, let us make man in our own image, according to our own likeness. God indeed would have done that alone. But there is this issue of inclusivity. That is wisdom. But when we think that we can do it all, is a symbol and character of a foolish man. There are some people that they use the gift God has given to them to do any kind of thing. When you are using the resources God has given you and you are using it in a favor manner or a very foolish way that you don't impact on the lives of people, that is not wisdom. That is foolishness. There are some of us that are in the business of dwelling in immorality. There are some people that love committing sin. In fact, they derive pleasure on committing sin. The woman whose heart is full of snares and nets, according to verse 26 of our Bible reading, that woman is a personification of seduction of immorality and wickedness. Some of us are in the business of seducing people. Some of us go about sleeping with people's husbands and wives. Some of us commit immorality and as if there is nothing that is happening. And yet on Sunday, you will go to church and take communion. On Wednesday, you will be the first person to be in the midweek service. And even your general overseer knows you as a very dedicated guild of steward. Yet, you go by the name at night, slay queen, or very powerful mama. You go by the name, boyfriend or girlfriend or lovers. That is not a character of a wise person. Wisdom demands that you have to live a very righteous life. For righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to every people. We must try as much as possible to live a life of wisdom by eradicating those things that are making us to commit immorality. 
viewers hear this. When we feast on immorality and drink from the well of iniquity, our life becomes a productivity of calamity. I take that again. When we feast on immorality and drink from the well of iniquity, our life becomes a productivity of in calamity. And that is why we must indeed imbibe the life of a godly living. Because when we do that, certainly that is wisdom. But when we do the opposite, that is foolishness. Number two is the vertical wisdom. This is the existence of your personal relationship with God. How do you relate with your God, your maker, your porter, the source of your life, the being that created you? In fact, I just say, the ability for you to have a vertical wisdom is dependent on the way or even it will make you definitely to have a horizontal wisdom. That is to say that when you have this good relationship with God, there is no how you will not have good relationship with your fellow man. It is now important for us to ask God of wisdom. He is the source of all things. God can give us anything that we want. Only if we can ask. Remember the word of God in James chapter 1 verse 5. He said, he who lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Who is free to give willingly without any reproach. And he will certainly give to you. Certain negative things that you are passing through. Certain challenges that are happening to you. It's not because your sin is greater than your neighbor or you are not praying well. Maybe because you have not possessed the right wisdom to handle those things. But when the wisdom of God befalls on you, you begin to possess the right mindsets on how to know how things work and the ability to solve that problem. This kind of wisdom we are talking about, you cannot acquire it from the nearby store supermarkets. This is not the kind of wisdom that you can acquire by having university degrees. This certainly comes from God. It's only God that can give us such wisdom that even money cannot buy. When you have that kind of wisdom, you become the dominus of your life. That is to say, you become in charge of your affairs. A man that possesses wisdom has everything. I would like to share you with this true life story. The government of Zambia some years back sold a copper mine to an outside consortium for the sum of 25 million US dollars because they cannot manage to keep it. This is supposed to be an investment that will yield more fortune for the country of Zambia. But because the Thing the business is going down the copper mines, so they are looking the possible way of disposing it, and they have to invite and enter into a bilateral relationship with this outside consortium. Now, the deal is this the company that came over and took up that copper mine business in three months made a profit of 75 million dollars. A profit. This was not achieved by the level of prayer and fasting. I'm not saying that those things are bad. It's good, after all, as a Christian, you must. But these people were able to achieve this because they possess wisdom and understanding on how things work in the business of copper mining. When you possess accurate wisdom and sufficient understanding, then your prayer and fasting to God begins to make meaning even to both divinity and humanity. A man that lacks wisdom is most miserable and is more among all men to be pitied. We must begin to possess wisdom. And once we do that 
I can assure you that there are certain things you don't need to be meeting your pastor or your vicar to solve because that natural wisdom will tell you the best way to solve those problems. There are some problems that we have entered ordinarily we could have avoided them. But because we lack the basic understanding and wisdom, and that is why we see ourselves falling into those problems. And therefore this morning, we are encouraged to determine to be wise in all we do. Having heard all this, the question is, are you, yes, you watching and following me in this devotional, are you ready to be determined to be wise? As for me and my family, I've, we have decided, we have determined to be wise. It's a personal decision. It's a personal question. There's no need of trying to be coerced or forced. No. If you choose to be wise, wonderful. If you decide not to be, no problem. But I encourage you this morning, today, after today, all the rest of your life, to determine to have wisdom. Determine to be wise in all you do. And the only way we can do that is to draw closer to Christ, is to come to Jesus Christ. He is our author and finish of our faith. He is the only God and being that can give us all that we want. Listen to his words in John chapter 14, verse 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but except through me. What does that mean? Jesus is the only access to all assets. I chose not to settle out the assets, but I've decided to go through the right access to get my assets. When you have or you enter through the right access, everything, including wisdom we are discussing this morning, shall be made available unto you. Remember the word of God in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. says that his divine power has given us everything that requires that pertains to godly living and life. Whatever thing that you desire, Jesus' divine power will give it to you. Success. Breakthrough, whatever thing that you want, even the wisdom we are studying today, He will give it unto you. What are you still waiting for? We must do all we can to see that we have wisdom through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one that is capable and able to give us such. As we conclude this morning, I would like to conclude. With the ways of variable Celestine Oyu and Ozir, the Archdeacon Emeritus of the Diocese of Follow, in one of his teachings about wisdom, has this to say, and I quote, it says, when you lose money, you've lost nothing. When you've lost life, you seem to have lost something. But when you lose wisdom, you've lost everything. And I can remember Dr. Mines Monroe, the Bahamian minister that died some years back of blessed memory. He put it conversely that I can master. He says that when you have money, you have nothing. But when you have life, you seem to have something. But when you have wisdom, you have everything. Viewers. Think about that. May we bow our heads in prayer. Our precious Father, we thank you this morning for having teaching us and reminding us the essence of wisdom. Our prayer this morning is that you give us grace to have that wisdom. That we will be able to interact with our fellow human beings well. That we will be able to maintain and sustain our relationship with you. That at the end of the day, this wisdom will guide us aright in taking right decision. This wisdom will keep us to do that which is good and right, even as we expect your second coming. 
Thank you, most precious Father. Even as your wisdom will take us through today in all our doings, that at the end of the day, your name and your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, most precious Father. For we pray in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.